I got a black ski mask, but I don't ski, but I snowboard. That's an MC of peace. Right. If one of you try by Hi boys, uh, welcome back to a new episode. Today is going to be a little different one. Uh, we have by far <clears throat> the most interesting guest. Uh, I should add one of the wealthiest guests we've had on. 100%. <laughs> Look at that smile, bro. It's a, it's a funny smile. Yeah. Um, so we have Siddharth here. He is the co-founder. I mean, he's the founder and CEO of Snitch. So Siddharth, uh, the first question I want to ask you is, how is Bangalore? Like, how do you like the city? So I've I've been born and brought up here. So yeah. I just love the city. But uh, the traffic kind of sucks now. And uh, I think over the period of last... 30 years i've seen that transition of bangalore happening um you know earlier it was just the idli dosas filter yeah. coffee no and you know chill vibes yeah. cabin park um it was very breezy and now i think it's kind of shifting and uh, now it's like brick oven yeah, yeah now it's <laughs> yeah. Blazing, easy blazing hot it's blazing. yeah it's blazing hot and uh, the traffic is crazy uh, yeah. there's so much buzz happening um yeah so i think that that is kind of changed but mm. the city is so just so you are a bangalore boy yeah 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 from the born start. and brought up okay so tell us about yeah, like yeah, where was your school your 11th and 12th and your degree so i was in a school called st mary's public high school okay. oh <laughs> the st mary's boys and girls <laughs> <laughs> there were barely about 50 students there <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> represent represent <laughs> well, look at that one of your alumni yeah so that's where i started okay. from okay. grade 1 to 7 right, uh, okay. which was very close by to my house okay. and then uh, my dad forcefully got me out of there uh, and put me into josephs and then i became a josephite uh, so from 7th, grade 7 to 10th, I was in Joseph's. And then post that, I did my PUC and my uh, degree in uh, JN College. Okay, Man. he's a Josephite. He's a oh, Josephite. Yeah. All of us are Josephites. I'm no. a recent Josephite. Oh, yeah? Really? With, really? with, a, with yeah. a degree. Okay. Degree. I studied only in PU, though. So in PU, I studied in Joseph's, yeah. Ah, okay. Okay, so for our viewers, like, can you just explain what Snitch is and how you came up with the brand? So, uh, Snitch is a men's fast fashion brand. Uh, so, I mean, I was, I've, I've always been into apparel. My story is like pretty long, and I don't want to actually, um, you know, bore. No, 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 I, no I, please, we want to hear. Please, this is a please, podcast. Like, yeah, yeah, like, please, 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 go on. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it started, stories. it started way back in two thousand nine. Um, so okay. I was in Jane College, so it was a morning college shift. Hmm. Post that, I used to help my dad in his jewelry store. Uh, okay. and um, you know I was never interested in jewelry and wanted to do something in clothing mm -hmm. uh, and luckily there was a store just next to uh, my dad's store that was getting empty mm -hmm. and I told him I, I want to do something in apparel and uh, you know I, I, it's just next door I could manage both and he was like okay cool uh, and it was barely a 350 square foot retail store okay. uh, and Bangalore is a manufacturing hub for apparels uh, mm -hmm. So I used to go to these factories, uh, buy, pick up their leftover stocks, uh, the surplus clothing, and then sell them in retail. Okay. Uh, and the store started doing well. Um, so I, I mean, college was 7.30 to 12.30. Used to have my lunch, 2 to 8 o'clock. I used to run the store. Life was good. I was making about good enough 30, 40,000 yeah. bucks a month. As a college student. Wait, so as a college student, you had your own store? Yep. Yeah. While parallelly. While, while yeah. actually. Okay. Uh, and this was all the so way back in 2009 as well. Yeah. That's good. yeah. Was it rented? Yeah, oh, yeah it was it? rented, rented. Okay, rented. so how were you like rented on the first time? floor? So it was not okay. even like a Wait, where was ground this? floor store. Where was this store? You know, Fraser Town, bro. Okay. Yeah. Oh, he's a Fraser bro. Town boy, bro. 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 Yeah, life is a circle. So I started from Fraser Town, and okay. again, our HQ now is in Fraser Town. Fraser Town, okay. Okay. yeah. Fraser Town. And bef in this uh, middle journey, I've sort of uh, hmm. moved to five, six different places. Come back to Fraser Town. <laughs> yeah. So wait, so as a college student. What was like your earning? How much did you earn every month? Um, so I think I started off in when I was in my second year. Okay. PU, uh, second year BCom. Degree. Uh, okay. And then it was 800 bucks was my pocket money. Okay. Uh, for like a week. And when I started sort of earning, I used to obviously put all the profits in the, into the business. So I never took out any money, okay. but I was making decent, I think about 10, 20,000 bucks. So did you ever have that thought where, okay, instead of putting it into the business, I know I want to like chill with my friends or like splurge a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I mean, I did a little bit and then uh, actually the business made me really, really serious. 
Uh, and then I actually got deeper and deeper and deeper uh, because, uh, like I told you, right? So 2009, I started the store. Uh, probably one year down the line, a lot of other retailers were sort of interested in buying similar merchandise, and you know they were like, "Could you source for us as well?" <coughs> and that started growing. Mm. Like I used to procure more, run the store during the day, and post eight o'clock till like three in the morning. I used to pack these orders okay. and mm. ship them out. Um, so th- that was happening like every single day and. Uh, you know, slowly until 2012, we actually was supplying almost about 70, 80 retailers across India. Uh, okay. And then 2012, I remember. So there was a particular factory which wanted to sell out the fabric as well. Okay. Uh, and this was like beautiful shirt fabric. I had to just pick the stock from place one A and Mango. give it to the guy who was interested to buy. I had a buyer ready. The fabric was worth about 25 lakhs. I didn't have that money. I had just about two, two and a half lakhs in my savings. Wait, so 25 lakhs is for how much? Like, it's, so that, it's in that was about 20,000 meters okay. Uh, okay. Uh, of fabric. Okay. And, you know, so these factories usually have these surplus fabrics. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they wanted to, you know, sort of liquidate that. Uh, and I had a bu- buyer ready because the fabric was amazing. Uh, but to my bad luck, the factory had an audit as soon as I did that transfer of payment. And they couldn't dispatch it for like 25 to 30 days. Okay. And mm. post which the buyer told me, bro, it's too late and, and I, I don't need this fabric anymore. And I was basically stuck with that fabric, kept it at a friend's garage, uh, you know, then made these small swatches of those fabrics, those small bits, mm-hmm. and then yeah. distributed to all these 70, 80 retailers that I knew. And there was one particular retailer in Bombay who, who had about 17, 18 stores. Uh, and he told me, Sid, the fabric is fabulous. Can you make shirts out of them? Okay. And I was like stunned because production, I didn't know anything about production. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he was like, yeah, they just make about two, 300 pieces of samples. Uh, if it works, you know, I could bail you out of this situation because I had to repay money as well. Um, that's when the real hustle started, right? Uh, Wait, so when was this? This was 2012-13. Oh, so okay. you were in college? No, 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 no he just, I, he graduated. I'd, I'd graduated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I graduated. Yeah. I, I actually did not complete my graduation to be honest oh. so, <laughs> yeah so, you so I had very yeah. good friends who ne- never let me attend college <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's what, and it's that, Jane I, dude <laughs> yeah I want to ask you about that like how was this whole <laughs> dynamic with your friends and like apparel like how did that work out so I mean I have very very few friends to be honest and these friends have been there with me for about 20 years now uh, so there was one one guy called Nitin. He's in Dubai mm. uh, currently. Uh, he's the guy who made me drop out of college. <laughs> okay. uh, you know, I, one sudden <laughs> day I get a I get a um, you know call from my dad. I mean, call as in he just cramped my name in house and was like, what happened? And there was a letter saying uh, you know you you didn't you don't get that certificate to attend the examination oh, i was shit. like what what happened and then he's like where do you go to college <laughs> i mean you're you're entering college at 11 you come out at 12:30 yeah. <laughs> you're supposed to enter at 7 and come out at 12:30 okay. so, so I, I, yeah i didn't have any attendance okay. bro like I, in 3 4 classes though i mean teachers <laughs> never knew bro, i existed okay so you had attendance shortage your family was like what is this boy doing yeah. so with that mindset, with that pressure, yeah. How did you get the ball to like to still carry just, like on. carry on like with this whole manufacturing thing, find buyers? Yeah, I mean, what what will you do? There's nothing in life to do. So like, I yeah. I had to look after my dad's store for sure. Uh, that was sort of set in my mind when I was doing my college itself. But you know, I, when I sat there in the store, I was like checking ring sizes of women. It, it mm. never gave me that sort of kick. And that's when, you know, apparel happened and I, I went into that. And, you know, coming back to that story, um, so I sort of, you know, was stuck and, you know, sent out those swatches. Mm. Uh, so there was one particular retailer in Bombay. He had about 17, 18 stores. And he was like, you know, said the fabric is fabulous. Can you make shirts out of them? Um, and I was stunned because I didn't know anything about production. Uh, so... I found a very, very small unit. The, the, I first went to the larger ones. They said, you know, such a small MOQ, mm. we don't do. And plus the fabric is yours. We'll just get that job work charges, etc. So one, find, found a very small unit, uh, sat there for about six to eight weeks, understood the whole process of production. Um, you know, how, how are silhouettes made? What sort of patterns? How do you cut a fabric? What is it, this stitch called, etc., etc. Designed those two, 300 pieces as samples and sent it out to Bombay. Over the weekend, all those shirts flew off his counter and ended up converting that entire batch of fabric into um, shirts. 
so if I was trading that fabric, I I was making about two and a half lakh rupees. Okay. Mm. But when I converted them into shirts, I ended up making six and a half lakh rupees. Wow. Okay, so what oh, shirts were these? Like so th these were just um, you know different blends of fabric and mm. very very basic sort of shirts. So people really liked something. The fabric, mm. I mean, uh, you know, there were minor detailings in it. You know, the shoulder had some sort of trim inside. Okay. Uh, the buttons were you, you know really unique and a lot of very very mild and minimalist minim, uh, minimalist. sort of minimalistic, minimalistic yeah. designs. Uh, designs so you got into designing this as well into yeah i mean uh, i was i think i'm not a good designer but i could probably um, you know imagine things mm. in 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 a particular way as soon as i see a fabric you know how would this look yeah. after you knew made. what you want yeah okay <coughs> so right now uh, you probably have designers and everything right yeah but in the beginning, who was doing that? So your first. So I was doing everything. So from 2012, one once this whole entire mm -hmm. thing happened, yeah. I you know uh, sort of left the retail store business and went into manufacturing. Okay. So from 2012 until 2019, I was manufacturing for a lot of brands like your Madhuras, Arvinds, uh, Landmark Group in mm. Dubai. Wait, okay. so how did you have the manufacture? Did you have a unit? No, we never owned a unit. Okay. So we were okay. running like a buying house. Um, mm. So if you're a brand, you come to us, we do the design. You know, we do the sort of tech packs for you. Yeah. We would do the sampling and we would deliver you the products. Okay. So that was the sort of business model. Uh, and, you know, over a period of seven years, scaled that business to almost 70, 80 crores oh. uh, per annum. But, per you know, it, it was sort of, um, you know, at its saturation, I would say, because uh, I wanted to do something of my own and start my own label, etc. And that's when Snitch happened in 2019. Okay. Uh, again, um, you know, the thought process was um, I used to meet a lot of, you know, young guys like you and even myself. I mean, I was asking this question again and again that why am I not resonating with the traditional brands that are existing in India, right? Mm. If I ask you today to go to a Louis Philip or an Alan Solly and buy a shirt, I mean, you'll be like, why? It's not my wedding. Yeah. yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. Uh, because you don't resonate with the brand. While brands like H&M and Zara came from the West and they were disrupting the traditional model of business. Uh, so that was the whole thought process. Uh, started Snitch more like a B2B brand because that's mm. what I knew. Yeah. Um, you know, used to supply to retailers across India. Uh, we got tremendous response. We, it was a very, very unique, different, you know, business model. So usually in apparel, what happens is if you're a brand uh, and you're trying to sell a product to different retailers, you have to do a roadshow. Uh, okay. And these retailers would come there and do your pre-bookings for the next six months. Retailers had to predict their sales for six months and, you know, sort of place orders. Okay. And the brands would then supply them. Okay. Uh, we said, uh, you know, why do you have to do that? We would give you new styles every single day through a small WhatsApp tech that we had yeah. built. And, uh, you know, the MOQ would be as low as 25 to 30 pieces. Okay. Uh, and that sort of caught fire. And within nine months, we were getting very, very good traction. Uh, but then, boom, the pandemic hit us. Uh, we were left with a huge inventory. Uh, and, you know, suddenly uh, I thought, let's go online mm -hmm. uh, because that's that's something where I could liquidate the, the stock at least. Uh, the first thought was go to some marketplace, try and liquidate stock, but then realized, A, we wouldn't be making any money yep. there. Uh, and B, the brand would not get recognition, right? Yeah. There are 10,000 brands there. Like RGO and all. Yeah, yeah RGO, Mintra, etc. But then yeah. realize that you wouldn't get any, you know, sort of placement. Hmm. Uh, that's when we decided to start our own website. Barely about, um, you know, 35 products, a uh, team of four to five people, and two racks in the corner of the office was our warehouse. Wait, so um, how did you build this team? Like in the start, when you started Snitch, yeah. how do you build a team around you? Uh, so the first guy I had approached is Nitin, you remember? Yeah. So yeah. Nitin's oh, wow. younger brother, Chetan. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, he's a CMO currently. Uh, so I I, mm. I wanted someone who could do the sort of marketing bit. Uh, and he was working in a marketing agency. Uh, so I just called up Nitin. I was like, you know, I wanted to uh, speak to Chetan, just see if, you know, things work out and he could join me. Uh, and, um, you know, brief chat with him. And, um, you know, it was anyways covid so Chetan was like, yeah, cool, let's mm. do this. Uh, and, you know, we figured out, set up the entire website on Shopify, uh, learned how to, you know, sort of run ads on you, uh, on Facebook through YouTube. Mm. Uh, I didn't even know the meaning of, you know, basic terms in e-commerce like okay. RTO. So RTO is basically return to origin. A okay. um, lot of small terms, small term. uh, but I didn't know any, any anything about e-commerce at all. Wait, so, okay, you did something different, right? Yeah. 
I mean, marketing, YouTube ads, and all that. Everyone does it. Yeah. But what was it that made you stand out? So I think the number one thing uh, was the timing itself, right? We were mm. in the peak of the pandemic. Mm. Traditional brands, everyone was heavily offline. They didn't even have an, a website. Traditional right? bra- brands, examples. Uh, like your mm. Maduras and Arvins of the world, mm. right? Okay. There are tons of brands under them. Uh, so these were largely offline uh, sort of players. And in online, there was just huge marketplaces and brands were inside marketplaces. Mm. Very, you know, few brands like Bevakuf and, um, you know, Soul Store, etc. were there online that time. Uh, and that sort of gave us the leverage because these brands were no competition here. Mm. There was just about three or four people. And then, you know, so Facebook as a channel works very, very differently. The algorithms mm. are very different, right? Uh, the top of the funnel was completely open for us because there were no brands spending money there. On Facebook? Yeah. On Facebook. They were not spending money there because yeah. they didn't have their offline stores open. So why would yep. they run ads? Uh, and online, they didn't have presence. So we got very, very, you know, sort of cheap traffic on our website. And that's how, you know, we started to build good content, good products, good customer experience, learned a lot over, you know, yeah, the last so, three years. Yeah. That's the next question I want to come to. So... Through your years of snitch, like working for, I mean, building up snitch, what were like a few things that you learned in the start and towards the end? I think the number one thing was our risk taking ability. I mean, we've we've gone mm. all guns, okay. um, you know, always played on the front foot, uh, never got scared like, yeah, ye hua to kya hoga, sorts. Yep. So mm. we were always like, um, you know, let's let's do it. Anything that we decided, we were like, let's do it. There was no one to ask anything. A few examples, uh, any examples? I mean, a lot of things. Like we, you know, one year down the journey, we decided sad- suddenly me and Chetan were sitting, we were like, app karte. We were like, yeah. okay, karte. Online store. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, so we we said, we uh, if you want to be in every men's wardrobe, mm. um, you know, most of the time men spend is on their phone. Let's get an app. Uh, we built the app. You know, to, today we have over 2.5 million uh, downloads on the app. Okay. Um, so very, very, uh, you know, small things like, um, hiring itself right um, so when we started we didn't have the money to hire the big people right mm. uh, so it was covid colleges were shut a lot of students started approaching so there was one of my cousin who joined me first mm. and then she brought in at least 15 to 20 people and then we set up our customer support team through them wait okay. so did you pay them or yeah it was very uh, basic right it, yeah. it was very very basic, basic like market a, yeah 10 value. to fifteen thousand sorts okay uh, so we used to pay them obviously but mm. um, you know that sort of gave us the confidence that we could nurture talent in house. Mm. Uh, we could bring in fresh people and then you know sort of groom them and train them. Uh, and we had a couple of other folks like in the team of four or five people. There was Praveen who had some sort of experience in ops and Naveen who had some finance and uh, you know e-commerce background etc. So we could somehow groom these you know small um, kids who were who just like fre- not even completed their graduation. It mm. was just because of COVID there was no colleges. And they came in and joined us. So how did that turn out now? Like, how are they right now? Oh, uh, just to tell you an example, one guy uh, wh- who joined us as a customer support executive today manages a large chunk of our offline business. Oh, okay. And he's the... Uh, in sort Bangalore? Of, yeah, yeah, Bangalore. Uh, okay. And I mean, wherever. We've expanded now in Gujarat, in Maharashtra, mm. etc. Um, so he he handles largely the offline business now. Mm, okay. Okay, so Siddharth, uh, you went on Shark Tank and... Yeah. I assume you've got most of your traffic from there. Yeah. So how has reception been ever since then? It's been crazy. I mean, uh, you know, first of all, we were sort of big enough to be there on Shark Tank, right? My marketing team just told me we've done everything. You'll have to just go there. Okay. Uh, And, you know, uh, I had to go for one audition in Bangalore. Uh, Somehow they liked it and it cracked. And then they called me to Bombay. My travel was paid my food was taken care of uh, i didn't have to do i i didn't have to spend a penny okay. uh, and you know uh, just went in there uh, i was actually supposed to go uh, in the first sort of slot which was at 8 30 in the morning so i woke up at 6 30 you know got um, a little nervous etc went there and sat mm. uh, and actually entered the tank at 10 30 in the night <laughs> because oh. they, the they sort of shifted everything and by 10 30 i was exhausted All right. uh, my you know brain was not functioning I, I just like had a coffee shot before i entered the tank and then um, you know it, and after that nice whatever is there history, it went yeah. on for about one and a half hours okay uh, one of the best sort of experience that i've had yeah, cause and uh, i mean after that it's it's been very very overwhelming so uh 
so when you entered shark tank right yeah. so can you tell like a few things that you had to do before maybe in the auditioning like is there any stories that will yeah, like, so like really so th- like you're prepping for shark tank like yeah. how do you even apply for it like in so it's very very simple so there's a basic form you'll have to just fill that form online hmm. uh, and once you've done that they would probably come back to you after say about 15 20 days with an email uh, after that you know you again get a email for a video sort of of your journey etc and once you upload that and you're sort of selected they would call you for an offline uh, audition where you know there are these basic analysts who are sitting and taking that audition mm. and post that if you're selected you go to the tank so you have to be really good with numbers i no, think yeah everything. i mean everyone who's there into the business should do, know their numbers regardless of uh, shark tank i would say i mean you should you should at least know the basics I of your business i think it will come to you naturally once yeah. once you're doing yeah. your business yeah. Yeah. everything yeah. It just, just comes, comes in naturally yeah. yeah okay so like what have you noticed in the indian market like clothing space mm. uh through your years of snitch so i think i've noticed a lot of things so traditionally right why do we exist it, first the traditional brands were always making collection season wise there was a summer collection winter collection and there was nothing beyond that mm. at least in the men's space uh brands like h&m and zara said we'll drop new styles every week every month etc so we said you know this was the best sort of uh gap that we could do if we could build aspiration for consumers and if we could give good price points so just to give you in short zara uh in europe is a cheap fast fashion brand all right when it came to india it became a premium fast fashion brand right. we wanted to create that zara which existed in europe for india okay uh, and that could only happen if we could you know sort of make fabrics which were relevant to india uh, you know the silhouettes of i mean the body type of um, europeans and indians are very mm, different same, so we had to sort of um, you know tweak with our fits mm. uh, the fabrics because the climatic conditions are very different um, you know those won't work here so i mean a lot of um, tweaks that we had to do and then a, a lot of customer feedback actually helped us uh, you know keep refining our uh, product line hmm. wait so, uh, so the indian like audience like indian consumers do they care about the value or the designs so i think uh, largely it is the design first okay. value is i mean you cannot build a pro- a, a brand on uh, pricing value so, yeah. uh, pricing should be your last sort of mode i think number one thing is aspiration if you could drive that give a you know rock solid um, sort of product and then pricing would be just like that cherry on top so for example okay as for a shirt yeah what is like the appropriate like pricing for indians like what do indians buy i think it again dif- differentiates right people buy shirts from 300 rupees to maybe 30000 yeah okay uh, so it all actually depends on who are your target audience we always knew we wanted to cater to the 18 to 25 sort of people who would largely be spending say about 4 to 5000 rupees a month maybe on clothing and that's how we started to um, you know design our products as well as kept our price points so we wanted to be say about uh, 30% upwards of max in zodio okay. and be say maybe 50% half uh, 50% lower than azara right. and that that was the sort of gap that we were trying to fill okay wait so coming so in, back yeah. so coming back from the sn- uh, for the shark tank thing yeah how has all on all five shark deal affected your business like how, how do they play an, a role in management processing like uh, see first of all uh, what does a e-commerce brand want is uh, credibility right and trust shark tank gave us a trust, trust. Uh, and in terms of the sharks i mean look they're not going to run your business uh, they're going to help you sort of um, you know get building network and we were quite large back then um, so you know they helped us with um sort of building network with people if there was any sort of help that i required or in terms of just understanding some piece of offline business uh, everyone had dis- mm. different different expertise so they would connect me to someone whom they knew but largely I, even i have not bothered them too much and mm. um, you know we've sort of uh, kept learning and learning by our mistakes and um, you know the online today you google anything uh, it's it's available so you spoke about max right yeah Yeah. uh so recently i went to max to yeah. purchase uh, you know a t-shirt yeah and when i went there it felt like i was shopping for my dad yeah i mm. don't know why everything yeah. is so outdated yeah. so do you think like max is falling off uh i mean i wouldn't say that but i yeah. think uh 
largely uh, these brands have been built on certain pillars mm. which are very very you know difficult to change for them uh, and newer brands and newer minds uh, today are sort of disrupting that yeah. whole model of business right uh, so i think that that is sort of evolving a um, lot of these brands have not learned actually how what what does the gen z and the millennial want yeah, they have not adapted to gen yeah, z yeah they've not they've not yeah. sort of adapted and they did not expect this to change so i mean drastically, drastically. you yeah. would you would not imagine people wearing oversized t-shirts and going to college yeah. 100% yeah. <laughs> so uh -huh. uh they always thought that it's not going to work we were making oversized t-shirts from almost 3 years now yeah um uh, because we knew the west is following it china is do doing a lot of production in these lines so this is going to come here so yeah. uh, if if a fashion comes in the west yeah uh how long does it take for it to come to india so i think it all depends again yeah uh, there's no like a, a fixed sort of formula but i think if you're sort of reading brands globally mm. uh trying to make something imagining indian consumers uh, there is a huge huge potential uh because you'll have to think of indian like i told you body type climatic conditions etc and then if you could blend these two and make a product it's a super hit sort of a formula okay but so like you can guarantee that whatever's working there will eventually find its way in india you can't guarantee mm. that but okay. yeah a lot of it comes here Uh, when will it come it doesn't really matter right okay. it might come to the tier 1 first oh. then it'll go to the tier 2 3 and 4 it might go 6 months later like okay. i've seen my cousins uh say from kgf they never worn skinny denims okay. right they were always in that bell bottom sort of denims okay. and suddenly when you know people in tier 1 started wearing then tier 2 uh, so they started ad adopting to that and they were mm. like okay this is um you know something that's in trend and they started wearing skinny jeans okay uh, and now again you have these baggy fits and so so belts. tier 1 dictates what other what other yeah sort of yeah i think it drives that. aspiration not dictates yeah. okay. but uh, it drives aspiration right so i mean building a brand is like a pyramid you'll have mm. to start from the top you can't imagine mercedes benz though it might be sold highest in tier 2 and 3 and it does sell highest in tier 2 and 3 mm. but it's branded and made I mean the branding is done in tier 1. So it yeah. it's always like it's what top of the tier. Yeah, yeah, I mean even with Maruti, right? It just can't go to Belgaum and say boss I want to yeah. uh, start a brand <laughs> here. They'll have to come to the tier 1 sort of understand because that's the tough nut to crack. Mm. And once you start of building that aspiration in in the people of tier 1 becomes pretty easy for you to yeah. go Easier deeper. Go. Okay, so snitch is mainly a men's apparel, right? Yeah. So that means you're like leaving 50% of your audience out yeah. which is female so yeah. would in the future would yeah. you ever create snitch for women i mean i've never thought of it to be very honest but if circumstances demand yes we may uh, but at least for the next 12 to 18 months i don't i don't see that happening okay like how did you scale snitch because i think that's the problem a lot of clothing brands have to scale it yeah so how do you scale it with like tier 1 tier 2 cities etc like how do you go about that i think um, you know it is very very important to be very focused uh, like i told you risk ta taking ability is something that you'll have to have uh, more largely it is to you know who are your audience if you understand them really well what sort of content do they watch how could you just bring eyeballs right if i'm mm. wearing this t-shirt here mm. uh, four of you all have seen it um so i mean you know when i used to wear it back then people used to actually tell me why are you wearing this yeah i mean it looks like you're in a corporate job uh, but then yeah. you know i just wanted people to notice the brand so if i'm wearing this going to an airport someone reads it goes on instagram and sees this suddenly out. there's a recall yep. right um uh, so i think we've done a lot of smaller things we we launched a program called you know br ambassador okay. wherein we told um you know we are going to make all our customers our brand ambassadors uh as soon as you make a purchase we would send you a email saying that hey there's a chance for you to become a brand ambassador please promote us um, you know on your instagram handle okay. put a story and uh, this thing and whatever revenue that you generate mm. you get incentivized for that okay. and that started off to kick uh, and then you know a lot of then shark tank happened that sort of gave us a lot of growth okay. uh, and from there on it was just about building with the right sort of product right sort of branding and right sort of customer experience okay so what is it valued at right now snitch in terms of uh, just total valuation total no i i mean i wouldn't want to um, sort just of speak on the valuation but yeah we are roughly at about we're doing about uh 
350 crore sort of a revenue per annum oh congratulations my, I guess, oh, man. Man. congratulations <laughs> how does it feel how does it feel being yeah, top 1% feel? <laughs> <laughs> no i i don't think so yaar i think money mattered a lot till the age of 30 okay right post 30 i mean i wanted to have the best car i wanted to have the best house i did everything okay. and now it, it's like you know it doesn't fascinate me anymore i've stopped wearing you know luxurious products i've stopped buying luxurious products uh, it is more towards um, you know creating value for people who are working under you doing a lot of um, you know things that you actually believe could become really really large and um, so okay so <laughs> once you hit your mark your milestone you want to be rich as hell yeah what was the costliest thing you have purchased i think it would be a house and a car so i bought the jlc glc amg 43 casual uh, like casual cash 8 10 years back <laughs> casual uh, which costed me about a crore uh, before even starting snatch okay. actually okay oh, so wow. i i owned um, i mean both the cars that's a c class and a glc uh, 43 before starting snatch um, so i invested in that and plus a couple of properties yeah okay so okay so money aside like yeah. you said you've got bored with money like nothing can get you like that dopamine of yeah. happiness yeah. so what what are you looking forward to so i think we want to be the number one fashion brand right and that's that's like the whole ideology uh we've been sort of chasing i mean honestly uh in our office we don't really chase numbers we chase how many customers do we acquire right we are at about uh, 15 lakhs 16 lakhs sort of a number how do we um, you know sort of take that per, number upwards per year or per annum overall, overall overall customers overall. that we hold Okay. how do we go to a 2.5 crore sort of a mm. number right okay. so that's that's the sort of thing and uh i think for everyone in life once you've crossed certain milestones then money is just like okay if you have like it's a good there. decent amount of money to have the, that you know good lifestyle and mm. sort of um, you know drive the car that you want etc after that it gets sort of boring Uh, but that can't actually give you that kick did like okay how did the people's you know reaction to you change like around your family your oh, friends yeah, yeah 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 like the perspective <laughs> of you yeah. like did you did you cut people off intentionally uh i do sometimes because um, you know it becomes really really uh you know difficult to answer every phone call uh, mm. so i usually don't pick up unknown numbers but then people take it otherwise uh but i think it's okay because i understand you know what what i'm going through all day and uh that really doesn't uh, bother me but i think you know largely obviously your family is really proud uh, mm. you know you're being talked about etc but uh, beyond that i don't see anything but yeah far off cousin would suddenly recognize you etc so that that usually happens oh, yeah, suddenly recognize yeah, you yeah, 100% yeah. like you you went on snitch and your cousin was like bro uh, oh, how yeah. are you doing <laughs> great episode yeah so that sort of happened but then mm. i didn't really um, you know think too much on it like how do you react to them to the people who suddenly just show up no i mean i don't react then but mm. i as soon as i dropped the call i was like isko kya hua oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, delete <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Okay. Um so in India uh I've heard in business term that you can create a company for the whole world or you can create that company for India. Yeah. India is a very different market. Yeah. So in other parts of the I mean the world there's like segmentation. So uh you know there'll be something for t-shirts like a brand for t-shirts, jackets etc. So does segmentation work in India? Like a br- uh, a brand exclusively for you know maybe joggers. something like that yeah it does it does i mean at least for t-shirts and a few products it does but i think india is difficult because of the dynamics of people right we mm-hmm. have about 140 crore odd people very very different in nature culture upbringing mm-hmm. society education it is very very vast okay. so to sort of build something very particular you have to first choose your niche uh if you think that yeah these are the people uh this is the age group this is where they live this is what they think you know this is what they want to do in life and i want to build a product for them then it becomes very easy for you to you know start so so find a niche s- yeah find yep. a niche yeah then sort of you know understand what do they want mm. and then if you could probably provide a product which had great quality and you know great sort of uh feedback 
then then you know sky is the sort of limit and i think the sort of potential that india has at least for the next two decades yeah. i don't see that happening anywhere across the globe yeah so like because yeah, i feel like 140 crore people india, like there's multiple niches if you, you could can crack cover. a business which is in india make yeah. it really large yeah. you could expand that globally you know and it's more of the fact that it's a indian brand just cuz it's an indian brand yeah. i feel like indians would invest yeah in i mean online business for example right yeah. when did you think that indians are going to pay before and then get the product yeah that never happened but now you look look i mean everything is prepaid i mean you're paying for food before it's arrived you're paying for your clothes before they arrive uh, cod was a very large chunk it's reducing day by day yeah uh, that's cash on delivery yeah, is reducing yeah. mm-hmm. um, you know uh, day by day and people want to you know upi was a game changer i feel uh, you know instant money transfers etc so whatever the government has also done over the last 10 years i think largely affected Effective. the sort of uh, business that's happening plus the entire i mean youngest population in the world 65% uh, right yeah so yeah. that sort of gives you a very very strong insight that mm-hmm. how many businesses could be built yep 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 okay wait so uh, you're selling to all over india right uh what have you noticed like trends yeah. you know change in trends from north and south i think uh north to south i would say north is more retro uh and they mm-hmm. are they are someone who would actually try and uh flaunt anything uh they would want to test out a lot of um, you know new of it experimental yeah experimental. experimental they are very bold okay. um, you know that's that's the sort of people they are like bangaloreans for example look at us all of us are just subtle yeah, no, wearing like basic yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. um you know maybe we would just wear an oversized sort of a product but mm. not really go out loud so colorful products sell there more and like more yeah out. yeah so mm-hmm. bombay and above i think it is um, really fashionable in terms of they they want to wear good colors uh, mm. you know they want to flaunt accessories they want to you know sort of wear a jacket on top of whatever they wear etc in south it is a, a little more minimalistic okay so yeah. where's your audience like where's your i mean main consumer i think our number one city has always been bangalore, bangalore. Uh, but number 2 is delhi and cr uh, number 3 is hyderabad then mumbai so okay. largely it is um, you know the top 20 cities of the country okay easy man wait so uh, for us for under city yeah. before we took off yeah. we had this moment where we hit the algorithm hmm. right we started getting likes and like yeah. right? you know that happened yeah. so was that like was there a moment like that for snitch where it's like you cracked the algorithm yeah absolutely i think from day one itself like i told you right so initially our consumers were our friends and family mm-hmm. we didn't know how to run ads etc broadcasting people they were different family groups we were sending out saying that we started online etc people were just buying our aim was to do 10 orders a day so mm-hmm. that was the sort of mindset we said okay mm-hmm. even 10 orders a day is enough uh, and that's how we started then i think um, you know once we started understanding what people want in terms of one product in terms mm-hmm. of to his content uh, and if we could get that sort of balance right uh, i think within 6 months we started sort of exploding that hey, what uh, do you mean content so in terms of content again right right we do a lot of content towards our like like my story right people mm. will resonate with my sort of story uh, then there's stories about how do you create designs um, mm. you know what what sort of a uh, team do you have and if you could bring that out in public mm. uh, you know people really resonate like if my designer is just telling that here was the trend that she spotted this is how she she sort of designed this piece and this is the output mm. right that sort of gives a lot of um, confidence to consumers plus they would you know sort of get attracted to you as a personality itself okay. and that's how you know it 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 becomes very shareable mm. yeah. okay yeah so I've heard that snitch is bootstrapped. Yeah. So you've not raised any kind of money yet. So uh we did raise our first round uh, okay. a couple of months back for about uh, 110 crores is what we raised. Okay. Uh yeah. So before that we were always bootstrapped, yeah. So how was that, you know, process of raising money? So for new businesses? Yeah. Any tips? I think it's the most easiest sort of time now if you yeah. have a good sort of solid a uh, product business uh, you know services business saas anything and um, you know you could sort of get that product market fit and mm. test it uh, you know it 
and then you have a rock solid sort of business plan it is very very easy for you to raise money to raise money in 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 today's day and age right so how much equity do you think you know a company like your size would yeah. have to raise would give out to raise uh i think initially uh it again depends on what size of business you are at mm. a lot of people dilute say about 30 40% also mm. uh, during the first two rounds uh, but we always thought we shouldn't cross the 10% mark so that's that's the sort of number that we've kept it at okay so mm. like for uh, for a company that's in the seed round yeah. right um i i would i would just define it in a very very short way right don't bother about valuation don't bother if you need that money desperately pick it up pick it don't up, okay. care how much equity are you you know sort of diluting yeah. you could fight for it hmm. right you could sort of bargain there you could try your best but then if you really need the money, you know need that money and you want to build something just do it because you know that time is not going to come again uh, there might be someone else who's just going to Um, you know, run so, over. So you. what you're saying is, if you have a rock solid business plan, if you yeah, see if this you, working, if out you actually time. believe, like I've I've seen so many founders who've diluted forty mm. percent in the first round, but they still hold equity till date, okay. and these are large companies valued at say about two three billion dollars. Mm. So, uh, for a company, there's like two options to raise money, right? I mean, there's plenty, yeah. but the main two options will be debt yeah. or raising through VCs. Yeah. Mm. So, what do you think is the right option for like a company which is in the seed round? So I think debt is by far the best way if you are mm. profitable, and if you could pay that interest and sort of, um, you know, clear money, debt is the best sort of option. Okay. But a large, uh, I mean, a lot, the lot of chunk of people would actually be um, non-profitable uh, because during your seed round you are just testing a lot of things, right? And you need money mm. uh, to sort of hire people, build tech, build product, etc. Then there, I think you know, equity is the best option. Hmm. Okay, so for a person who's like starting his own clothing brand in yeah, India, yeah, yeah, uh, how do you, you know, like what tips would you give him to hire? What's your first team? How do so you hire the first team? I I think first of all, the number one thing is clothing business is the most easiest business. Okay, um, you know, over over everything else because it does not require any sort of rocket science. You choose a niche, make you know maybe four styles first. Okay, um, you get fabric on credit. You get everything on credit. So there's nothing, no sort of investment that is required initially itself. Mm. You just need some money to sort of, um, you know, maybe buy some accessories, trims, etc. Mm. But largely everything could be done if you have referrals. So it's the most sort of easiest business, um, you know, to start off. And in clothing, there are very less chances that you would make huge losses. So mm. it is sort of profitable also at a certain scale. But once you get really large, then you know things change because a lot of, um, you know, fixed costs start coming in. So I think in terms of hiring, I would say if you just have one sort of person who could create good content, uh, could do some creativity with in terms of the product and in terms of um, you know showing what what sort of um, you know culture that you want to create through this product. Yeah. Uh, if you could sort of do that, a uh, couple of folks are more than enough. to first you know start off today everything that you want you know uh, to start an online business or an offline business the solutions are readily available you could rent warehouses they would do mm. the shipping for you mm. um, you know you could uh, outsource your uh, production i mean there are so many factories who are ready to do smaller mocus also now back then that was a challenge um, you know you could even um, catch hold of a very small sort of um you know tech person to mm. create your website within 24 to 48 hours mm. so largely everything is readily available okay so what about like designs and stuff how do they go about designs and you know what if the design doesn't work with the masses so uh the sort of business model that we are into we typically launch only 50 to 100 pieces mm. per design per color initially okay. and we build that entire tech stack behind which actually tells us in terms of demand prediction basis the sell through rate you know how many pieces could we again make mm -hmm. uh and in what sizes so there we have that advantage of not having dead stock with okay. so that so you came to sjcc to yeah. for um a gbc event so yeah. over there you mentioned that snitch they create new designs every day every day yeah yeah and how do you deal with like uh designs that don't go through So that's what I told you right the risk is very very low so we just do about 1500 <laughs> pieces 
uh, and there are very very few chances that even 50 100 won't sell okay uh, so it it might sell over a period of time and if it does not there is obvious options of discounting selling it on marketplaces or you know end of the year you could probably flush it out to um, you know some local vendor but largely i think if the moq is very small the risk is very low mm. Mm. okay talking so, about designs yeah, yeah. Uh, there was <laughs> <laughs> there, there was a, a, something I saw. Sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> there was something I saw recently. Yeah. Uh, on Instagram, he, he actually sent it to me. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to put out any name. names there, but cool. y- you know what I'm talking about. Oh, it was about the cargo pants. Yes. No, I mean, uh, look. Wait, wait. Before that. The story and then yeah. Yeah. So, basically, it was someone who copied someone who copied your yeah. exact design and claimed that you guys copied it from them yeah. so i wouldn't say i we never said that you know he copied ours or you know uh, we copied his okay uh, i think it is uh, i mean cargo pant is a cargo pant yeah, yeah. how can Dead someone ass. sort of um, you know maybe yeah, yeah. his pocket was half inch bigger my pocket was half inch smaller uh, we had a zip here. He did not have a zip here. Yeah. But I think uh, it was more towards a publici- publicity, publicity stunt. stunt yeah. And, mm. um, you know, I really did not want to reply also. But then, you know, I, I had like 50, 60 people sending me and they were like, what is this? What is this? And, you know, that's when the team decided that I think we should, you know, sit and reply. It's it's not about, I mean, I, I'm, I'm the most, um, you know, happiest guy if there are 10 apparel brands, you know, growing. Because we're creating a market for everyone right, right? Yeah. and i'm more than happy if people grow uh, but using others and cleansing on others back is you know sort of the yeah. but that real worked though like yeah. <laughs> i feel like y'all the got a new was really yeah, I, good I, I feel like y'all got a new whole like you know group yeah i mean uh, honestly uh, when i first saw it i ignored because i didn't find it relevant there was nothing that was matching right that mm the sort of cargo denim there and the sort of cargo denim here was entirely different. I was like, why is this guy even doing this? And then when it started getting viral and a lot of people commenting us, then it got a little serious and I was like, what is this? Um, You know, and and in this era of social media, you never know what happens. Mm. Like within hours, that that could, you know, catch fire, right? And then I thought, you know, it is important to Mm. sort of reply. Let us check, you know, what happened, etc. Let's pull out dates, pull out some data and at least figure out. Mm. Uh, and we wanted to be very true. And even in the video, we did not claim that he bought that product from us and copied. Mm. So it was largely saying that, boss, uh, you know, please, cargo pants or cargo pants, maybe, you know, your pocket size is... <laughs> I mean, you put your pocket smaller. down and he said that, you know, I've designed each part of this cargo pant and I was like, boss, G-Star has done that 20 years back. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what are you talking about? Um, so that that is what frustrated mm. me and mm. nothing beyond that. Okay, so mm. what do you think about like all these new brands like, you know, Soul Store, yeah. you know, Bonkers. Yeah. Do you think these are the brands that will take over for the next few generations? Absolutely, absolutely. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a huge fan of what Soul Store is doing. Okay. You know, they've built some phenomenal business through merchandising. Um, you know, they, again, like, like I said, right, they caught hold of a niche. People who love, um, you know, merchandising sort of products, Disney's, Marvel, mm. uh, you know, your Spider-Man, Superman. They got b- bought licenses of these uh, companies and made products uh, and then, you know, started to evolve as a brand. The same with Bonkers, right? Uh, mm. So I think they, again, chose a very different sort of niche of streetwear, clothing, etc. Mm. Uh, they understood consumer mindset and started producing brands. So. I think over the next 10 years, you would see a lot more brands like these getting very, very large, not only in apparels, Mm -hmm. but across different sectors. Because India is changing. Um, You know, like I told you, India is the most youngest country in the world right now Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of its population itself. Mm -hmm. So it is very important for brands to understand this generation and make products which are very, very relevant. And Mm -hmm. this generation really does not care about um, you know, money, they don't either they would go for that brand because, you know, they've sort of got inspired by uh, something the founder has said or maybe something with the journey or something with the product, uh, etc. Or, you know, they would just pick it up because they liked it. Hmm. Um, so you'll have to just catch those nerves. Earlier, it was very different, right? When I was a kid, my dad used to take me to one store, buy hmm. clothes for the next six months, come back home and sit. So, so there was no frequent hmm. buying. Okay. There was nothing 
but things have st- st- started to change, change now so it has become more like uh, more frequent and i think price sensitivity has become lesser mm. yeah i mean people don't care yaar mm. um, look at blue orange yeah. right mm. phenomenal brand they sell t-shirts for 3000 bucks yeah. and they're selling well uh, jay walking that guy is crazy man <laughs> i mean yeah. uh, you know he does very weird stuff he would i i've seen him putting his uh, you know bathing sort of pictures on his instagram page okay. he's created a phenomenal sort of um, you know cult uh, for mm. himself uh, and it's it's very difficult to do that honestly so like, it's very difficult so blue orange and jay walking yeah. so they have like a really good like social media presence yeah so but uh, for a new brand how do you think they should approach like you know social media presence and so i think it is a journey yaar whatever you do in life it is mm. a journey uh, i mean snitch's success is not what has happened 3 years right it is 10 years of years. slog years that i've done work, before yeah. this Uh, and it it would be similar with all these people like if you sit down with them understand their stories there'll be like a huge journey behind that and that's when they sort of start mm-hmm. and i think you have to really start really small today if you want to build a business in india you could start off as easy as selling on whatsapp th- to your friends or to mm-hmm. your college groups etc right. if that is you know sort of doing well go on instagram start selling there that's doing well then build a website so i think yeah. start really small do like um you know hustling and uh, sort of jugaad for 2 3 mm-hmm. years and once you are sort of set and you've learned a lot of things then you you could go all all guns out yeah yeah so what's like you know the future plan that you have with snitch and for example uh, we spoke about going into a female fashion yeah. Yeah. would you create a new brand and enter it or would honestly you... we've never thought of women's apparel mm. uh, <laughs> what we're doing now <laughs> is going largely offline mm. uh, so we're coming up with at least 20 30 stores in the next uh, 12 to 18 months okay. uh, because we knew that you know especially uh, if you want to sell larger um, you know quantities in apparel you'll have to have offline presence where consumers actually feel the product you know understand the brand uh, you know understand the customer experience that you give inside the store uh, you know even the sort of uh fits that you have mm. then it becomes very easy for them to buy online as well mm. so once you understand the brand you know what sort of fit are they offering and what sort of product line and pricing etc it becomes very easy for you to then buy next time online even okay. though if the product is new wait so like online and offline yeah uh, for snitch yeah where is your you know main income is it a 50 50 or no 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 i mean we are largely online oh, so largely about 90% yeah. of our revenue is online okay offline is just started now oh. uh, it's been about 6 months and i think over the next 18 to 24 months we going to build that where is your store. offline store so we have one store in bangalore janagar okay the second one just started last week in vr mall surat the third one is opening tomorrow again in surat the fourth one is coming up on brigade road bangalore oh uh, and then we're doing a very large store in hsr which is almost a 10000 square foot store okay uh, yeah. yeah not will not will the opening yeah i, yeah, I mean it is a public <laughs> opening bro i mean i would <laughs> i would tell you to get like 50000 people <laughs> okay okay so um i want to ask you this question so now you've made like your money right yeah and If I've not made, but you you made. You, I've I've gone all in. Whatever gone. I earned. Yeah. Let's just say you've made money. <laughs> made, you made the cash. The bag yeah. is here. It's, it's, so it's if you hard. had to, if you had to buy one dream car, like you, this is the car you need. What car would that be? I think I've set a goal for myself to buy the Lamborghini uh, Urus. Yeah, uh, in the year 2025. As soon as okay. the Lamborghini is new, bro. I mean, I've I've set that personal goal. Okay. Yeah. She It's not that far <laughs> off, is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, the numbers he's talking, you can buy. <laughs> I mean, um, to end it off, um, would you mind telling us your relationship status? Oh my! Uh, before oh, and yeah. after <laughs> this. <laughs> before and after this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, before, before snitch, snitch okay, and after, and after snitch. snitch. What was your like deal with women? <laughs> this will be the most boring answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. No, it's, it's fine. Answers. It's an answer. In, uh, okay. I'll okay. So the that. question is: Before snitch, before snitch went on Shark Tank. Okay. Before even starting my business, I was married. So. Oh. <laughs> okay. I mean, congratulations. Because yeah. because a lot of people want like you know that gym motivation where they go break up with their girlfriend and they get that you know that pump. Yeah. Okay. So that even I need now, but then <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. Oh, nice. Man. So yeah. So that's how we I ended up. Final statements for the, people who yeah. are watching right now. Yeah. yeah. For people who are watching and for new young entrepreneurs. a few tips etc just to end it off 
I think uh, the number one advice would, like I told you, um, mm. find the niche, have that risk taken ability. First thing is start. There's a lot of people in India yeah. dream a lot of things yeah. during the night, right? They've made a multi-million <laughs> project in their head. Yeah. Next day morning, it's flushed out. So I think on. the number one thing is to start, choose your niche, you know, have that ability to take smaller risk uh, and then increase that risk appetite mm. and just keep, you know, going at it. I think there is there is no sort of formula to get successful overnight. Mm. You'll have to go through the process of a lot of failures and don't be afraid of failures. I mean, I've had multiple failures too. And mm. then, um, you know, that really gave me a lot of confidence to come back harder. Wait, okay, is Snitch your only business? Yeah, currently, okay. yes. Certainly. Okay, right, perfect. Thank you guys for watching Snitch right. Checks on the City. Yes, sir. Perfect. Thank you. Perfect. I got a black ski mask, but I don't ski, but I snowboard. That's an MC off peace. If one of you try buying.